Hi, this is Ken from IPD. Today we're going to talk a little bit about direct fire or coilover plug ignition systems. I know this makes a lot of people uncomfortable who are used to the old school systems which involved cap and rotor and spark plug wires and they think that this is more complicated. But actually nothing can be further from the truth. The coil on plug system is far simpler and actually easier for the home do-it-yourselfer to work on. So we don't have to worry about any of this anymore. And you're just down to a single coil on plug for each cylinder of the car. It's actually very simple. We'll go to visual aids here. This is a cutaway of a stock coil. It's just cut down through the middle. And you can see that all that is here is just the simple copper windings of a coil just like you would expect in a normal coil. There's just five smaller ones on this particular car. All there is to the coil is this. The spring goes on the top of the spark plug. This boot covers the whole thing up. The thing you have to remember is that there are a couple of different designs of these coils. We have seen cars come in that had the wrong coils on them. In theory, in a perfect world, there are two different colors of electrical connectors, a gray one and a black one, and you should color code them. I don't think we can depend on the manufacturer staying with that in the long run. So you either need to check part numbers or look at the pattern of the pins inside the plugs and the sockets and guides that are in there to make sure that they're the same and the right ones for your car. I've seen a lot of cars that had the wrong coils on them and they still ran. I don't think it really hurts anything, but it certainly gives you some liability issues and some reliability issues in the long run. Okay, this is our 2004 R model stage three car. This has got some interesting parts on it. I know you'll see that. But it's still basically the same setup you would use on any of the turbo models and the non-turbo models are even simpler. Essentially the ignition system, the coils and plugs are simply under these covers. The covers are on using Torx 30 screws. Sometimes they can be stuck, especially in high corrosion environments. So it can't hurt to actually put a little anti on them when you put them back in when you're done. So you would remove all the screws and undo these clips forward and back and the covers pop off so you can get to the coils and plugs. On the turbocharged cars, the over the engine pipe comes over the top of the cover. In this particular case we have our new silicone high flow pipe on here and this pipe has enough flexibility that we can simply move it from side to side off of the screws that we want to and I can do this job without too much hassle. On most of these cars you will need to move this pipe to remove it from the top of the engine so you can get the cover off. That's going to involve different procedures depending on the years and models, so we're really not going to go into that in detail. The harness insulation cover on these cars is extremely susceptible to degradation, particularly from the high heat on top of these engines. If you see that stuff falling apart and you are worried about it, go ahead and break it off, peel it back, Take a look at the actual wires inside. Make sure you don't see fraying any place where the wires are grounding out. We have the insulation for sale on our website by the foot. It's not expensive. Cleans things up. Put it back together just like new. All the coils are just lined up on the top of the engine. Same would be true of the six cylinder cars. The four cylinder is a little bit different because they have a shared coil setup, but it's still basically the same principle. Each of the coils is held in place with a 10 millimeter bolt and an electrical plug. The plug, you just squeeze the clip to release, and then the coil simply pulls straight out. Sometimes the boot will stick to the spark plug. It's not a big deal. You can just reach down in there and grab it with a set of needle nose or something like that and pull it out they stick onto the plug sometimes because of the heat and the sticky nature of the boots. It's safest if you don't have a high degree of confidence to just do these one at a time. That way you can't possibly mix up the wiring. To pull out spark plugs you will need an extension and a socket specifically for the job. It's best if you have one that has a rubber plug in it or a magnet so that you don't drop the plug back down the hole as you're removing. It is quite a ways down there. This is the R motor, which has the longer reach plugs on it, which means they thread a long way before they come out. In this case, which we already knew, these plugs are ne nearly new on this car and there's very little erosion or wear present on the plugs. So we're just gonna go ahead and reinstall them. Installation is just a reversal of the removal. 
There's always a lot of questions about how tight should my spark plug go. I'm certain there are torque specs in the manual and they varied year by year. The truth is they go just tight enough to collapse the crush washer that's at the base of the spark plug against the cylinder. I know that all of us want to lean towards the fancy technical issues and think that maybe it's something expensive that's broken on these cars when a lot of times it's the simplest thing you can think of. These cars go through a lot of spark plugs. Most times we see misfire codes. They are from simply worn spark plugs or the wrong spark plugs. I would always try that first. That means that you might have to do this job a couple of times before you got to the final answer, but it's better than throwing a whole bunch of money at the car and not fixing it. So that's the basics of diagnostics and installation on spark plugs and coils in these cars. If you have any questions, feel free to give us a call for specific applications and prices, see our website.